live up and down the coast, from the beaches to the valleys. At 11, this is KEYT News Channel 3, where the news comes first. Good evening, everybody. I'm CJ Ward. One of the busiest travel days on record is nearly over tonight. Millions of people packed freeways and airport terminals today. Others took the train. And News Channel 3's Vicki Nguyen joins us live from the Amtrak train station in Santa Barbara. And Vicki, folks you spoke with tonight say they made the smart choice. Yes, everyone I talked to tonight said that they've definitely made the smarter choice by taking the train. And as you can see behind me, there's no train here. The last one for the night just left the station. And there's a long line full of people waiting to get onto a bus in order to get to their next location. Hopefully, they make it to the dinner table tomorrow. But we talked to a lot of people. They were all very proud and glad they made the decision. Everybody is just trying to make it to Thanksgiving dinner. To Grover Beach, um, uh, up north. I'm trying to go to San Jose. Last call, kind of forward, Lord, Closing door. But not everyone wants to sit in traffic to get there. I'm trying to go to LA, and I'm meeting um, an old friend from home. We're gonna, she's gonna pick me up, and we're gonna go to Palm Springs. Michaela Domingo is a student at Santa Barbara City College. She opted for a less stressful way to get to Thanksgiving dinner. It's the only mode of transportation I knew. All my roommates do it, so I was like, why not? Other students are also trying to get out of the college town and head home for the weekend. These students are taking a Greyhound bus. I'm trying to go to Pleasant Hill. My aunt and uncle live there, and we always go there for Thanksgiving. Get to get away from school for a little bit, uh, have some good food, hang out with the family. Their bus was over an hour late. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> How long is the, the route? Um, it says it's going to take like eight to nine hours, but it usually ends up being like a 12 hour journey. Corbin Tate blames his dad for booking his bus ticket. But is thankful to go home and see him. So my dad's a little cheap. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm taking the bus today. But no sweat. It's going to be a good time, hopefully. Fortunately for train travelers, Amtrak knew that there would be a surge in customers this weekend, so they made all of their uh, customers reserve their tickets earlier, way in advance. So everyone who got onto the train today had to buy their tickets three days, at least three days in advance. And Amtrak also added additional seats on their trains and routes in order to accommodate for everyone. Reporting live in Santa Barbara, Vic Nguyen, News Channel 3. All right, thank you. Hopefully one dad isn't watching the news tonight. Well, the top travel destination this holiday, there are actually a few of them. We have uh, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and San Diego. Santa Barbara is a popular airport to fly into and out of as well. Flights appeared to be full today. We even ran into the entire UCSB basketball team arriving from a recent game in Texas. And they're used to traveling during the holidays. They even have a practice set up for Thanksgiving Day. Um, it's hectic. But, I mean, it's kind of what we signed up for. You know, basketball is a winter sport, and unfortunately it falls in line with a lot of holidays. So um, that's part of, part of the task. Because when you go pro, you'll be working every holiday. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And AAA says most people will travel at least 50 miles from home, and most of them will travel by car. Preparations are underway in New York City for the annual Thanksgiving Day Parade. That includes protecting tens of thousands of spectators. The FBI alerted law enforcement across the country there is a concern for a potential terror attack. So this year, more than 80 dump trucks will be filled with sand to block the intersections. I see how hard, how vigilant um, police are. Um, and I see how they go out of, the, of their way to make us feel safe. It's just really scary no matter, no matter what precautions, um, you know, and I'm glad that they're thinking ahead. And for the first time in 90 years, police will ban vehicles from crossing the parade route along the entire two and a half mile stretch. And for the first time tonight, we are hearing from the sister of Michael Giles, the man who was shot and killed by Lompoc police on Monday. The Giles family comforted each other today with hugs, and they're trying to piece together exactly what led up to Monday's deadly shooting. Officers say they shot Giles because he threatened them with a knife. 
His sister says she's in shock. I just wish I could have said goodbye to my brother. And I just want him to know how much I love him. He had the kindness of heart. He always put people before him. And this video shows happier times for the Giles family. He's seen here singing along with his sister as they were driving. And the Giles family will not comment on any possible legal action. A service for Michael Giles is scheduled for Saturday. And sheriff's officials say the autopsy shows Giles died from a single gunshot to the chest. He was also shot in the hand. Also today, the sheriff's office released a statement confirming that witnesses saw Giles wielding a knife in a threatening manner and would not be hesitant to use his knife if confronted. Hundreds of people were treated to a Thanksgiving dinner with a south of the border flavor in Santa Maria tonight. News Channel 3's Keith Carls joins us live from Santa Maria with the annual Angel Hands Dinner. Keith. That's right, CJ. The, uh, for years now, the Angel Hands Dinner has provided a free meal to the people here in Santa Maria on the eve of Thanksgiving with the sole mantra of no questions asked. Manos de Angel, or Angel Hands, is a special occasion in Santa Maria. It's a labor of love for a local family, their friends and supporters to give back to their community at a time when many are in need. Well, there's people that probably have too much pride to come in here. There's probably people that don't even know about it. There are people out there hungry, I know there is, and I'm, I'm sure their children are. Uh, they may have no clue this happens. Um, I, I would say this is one tenth if, if and that's probably conservative of the people that are hungry they could come here and eat the fresh and hot carnitas dinner with all the trimmings was free to any and all who showed up at the santa maria veterans memorial building for three hours no questions asked there's a lot of people out here that have nothing to eat and they came in together everybody's smiling they're dancing and it's a beautiful thing Who's next? even santa was on hand to make sure all the youngsters went home with something to remember about this very special night. Yeah, very important because for the whole year you receive a lot of things, but this not only receive, you need to give things away too. So you need to give back. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Now, this Angel Hands dinner is paid for every year by three sisters of the same family who say they want no special recognition or attention. They say it's simply their way of uh, giving back to the community, to expression of thanks, if you will, at this time of year for the success that they've had in life and in business. And they also encourage others in the community to do the same. Live in Santa Maria, Keith Carls, News Channel 3. All right. Very nice. Thank you, Keith. Still ahead on News Channel 3 at 11, an archaeological gem is revealed at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. New details about a mammoth fossil that took nearly two years to dig up. And CJ, the busiest travel day of the year was a spectacular weather day in Santa Barbara, topping out at 73 degrees. Does it stay nice for Thanksgiving Day? And what about the rest of the holiday weekend? Stay tuned, I'll have that full forecast when News Channel 3 at 11 comes right back. Live, CJ Ward. Chief Meteorologist Alan Rose and Mike Clan Sports. This is KEYT News Channel 3, where the news comes first.
piece of the Channel Islands history is being studied at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History tonight. News Channel 3's Kelsey Yerkins tells us about the mammoth find that's 13,000 years in the making. At the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History, a special delivery, one brought in by mammoth movers. That pun fully intended. It's extremely well preserved. It's a rare find. Indeed. What's in this box has scientists amazed, but getting to this point wasn't easy. This guy's traveled more uh, today than the last 13,000 years. Flash back to 2014, when biologist Peter Laramendi just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Well, we were walking along and we just kind of just looked up to the left of us and there's just this mammoth dust right there. A mammoth discovery, literally. Lair Mendy made the find of a lifetime on Santa Rosa Island, and that is what started this two-year adventure. We went back, and I thought we'd have a, oh, an easy, just a tusk we, we could recover in an hour or so. That was in uh, October of 2014. We finished the job today. Since the discovery, Don Morris has led a team of paleontologists from the National Park Service to safely remove this fossil and bring it back to the mainland. We brought a very well-preserved uh, mammoth skull from Santa Rosa Island. It's easily the best I've seen. It took a while because we found out the tusk was connected to the skull, and then we knew we had a very complex project. What makes this find so remarkable is the mystery behind the fossil. Uh, we're not sure whether it's a small, uh, full-size Colombian mammoth, the uh, species that got out to the island originally, or whether it's a large variety of the pygmy mammoth. Or could it be the missing link between two different species of mammoths? That's the question Paul Collins at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History is trying to answer. The interesting thing about this particular specimen is that it's, it's a specimen that's intermediate in overall size between a full-size Colombian mammoth on the mainland, which would have stood at shoulder height at 14 feet, and the pygmy mammoth, which at shoulder height was only five and a half to six feet. Really unusual to get a fossil that is kind of midway through that process of dwarfing, uh, to actually have a, a specimen that you can look at that's showing that active process occurring. Besides possibly being the missing link, scientists are more intrigued by this find than others because charcoal samples date the skull to be 13,000 years old. That means the mammoth would have been alive at the same time man arrived in North America. Yay! They named the fossil Larry, and he did well in his journey from Santa Rosa Island. Now he will be poked, prodded, and studied at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. If it's suitable for exhibition, then we'll probably get it out for the public to be able to see. So why the name Larry? You can thank the man who found it, biologist Peter Laramendi. It's kind of all really overwhelming and hard to to just grasp the, the the significance of it because it was just this just this side profile and now it's this giant skull. It's pretty it's pretty amazing. Reporting in Santa Barbara, Kelsey Gerkins, News Channel Three. And museum officials will even let you watch them as they work on Larry. Special viewings will take place twice a week starting in late January. An unusual item went up for auction in South England. The skeleton of a big uh, bird bigger and stronger than a turkey hunted into extinction centuries ago. Now we're talking about the dodo skeleton is a grim reminder of man's impact on nature. Hungry European sailors found the bird on an island in the Indian Ocean in the late 1500s and within 80 years, the hapless and flightless bird was gone. Animal and bird species are being made extinct at a faster rate than ever, and that is one way or another our fault or mankind's fault. Uh, so whether we're actually learning the lesson, I don't think I'd like to say. And that bird right there, the skeleton, uh, went for 280,000 pounds. That's about $416,000 with commissions. 
Alan Rose joining us now with a look at weather, and we have a beautiful Thanksgiving day ahead of us. Yes, yeah, CJ, many things to be thankful for. The weather's one of them, family, friends, and of course, a good feast. Before we get to that, I think we've got some video again from Heavenly Mountain Resort. Bam! Opening today with five inches of freshie underneath those skis and boards. We have two runs open at Heavenly Mountain, four lifts spinning, and with some help from Mother Nature this weekend, they hope to expand the terrain. Uh, as we head towards the start of the winter season. So some good news out there in Tahoe. North Star also open. Mammoth has been open for a few weeks, and uh, I think we could see Boreal open and Mount Rose by the weekend. Uh, let's switch gears and take a look at a beautiful sunset. It's a big contrast to go from the snow out there in the Tahoe area to just a spectacular sunset. News Channel 3 viewer Carrie Larson captured in Santa Barbara. Uh, great looking weather out there today, as CJ mentioned. And it's going to stay really nice tomorrow. So we're going to continue to see lots of sunshine out there, some lingering breezes after tonight's gusty winds in the foothills, but nothing too widespread here in Santa Barbara. 67 for Friday. And then Saturday, look at this. We mix it up again. We get a return of another storm system to the area. Rain begins as we head towards the start of the weekend. If you're traveling tomorrow, maybe you're hitting the road early on Thursday instead of heading out today or yesterday. Look at some of these conditions up and down the coast. 59 in San Francisco. We'll see low 50s in Reno. Could be some rain maybe for parts of the upper Midwest. Also rain showers expected in New York with a high there in the 50s, 70s though around Atlanta. So some nice weather in the southeast, wet though in the northeast. Tonight, no sign of rain in our local forecast. It is more mild for the south coast tonight because of the offshore flow. Sandy Inez is at 41. Ojai already down to 42 and Paso at 39. And you can see those north North winds in Galena picking up over the past hour, 14 here, and we are under a wind advisory still in parts of Santa Barbara County till 3 a.m. Then as we head past midnight, the winds take on that northeasterly tilt. That's that Santa Ana that will impact Ventura and L.A. counties. Also, a high surf advisory in effect for the central coast until 6 p.m. Friday. So we have this one-two punch, not a big punch, not an uppercut, but maybe just a, a little tiny jab, if you will. Saturday, a chance for rain, and Sunday, a second one, as we get a series of storms that will sort of work down the coast from the eastern Pacific. Now, we are dry and sunny through Friday, but as we head towards Saturday morning, look at this. You'll begin to see the cloud cover thicken up. Could see some rain by late morning for the central coast, and it looks like for the afternoon for the Santa Barbara area. Now, timing and strength, not exactly pinpointed or nailed down at this point. Let me show you some of the longer range models. The GFS shows around a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. The Euro, not quite there, but hopefully we see these numbers build a little bit and we see both models level off. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night as you're dealing with that tryptophan coma to see what the latest is from the First Alert Weather Center. Great weather out there on Thanksgiving. Chilly in the morning, so feeling like fall, but a beautiful and warm afternoon. Highs will be from the upper 60s to lower and middle 70s, even some upper 70s out across parts of Ventura County. Uh, looking at the Santa Barbara seven-day forecast, the cooling begins Friday, and then a much cooler, cloudier, and wet at times forecast for the weekend in Lompoc, all the way down to 58 degrees on Saturday and just 60 on Sunday. You gotta love the end of the week here in San Ynez, Thanksgiving, dining outdoors is always an option, especially during the day. Uh, 73 there, 75 in Ventura, and then again, some wet weather in that weekend forecast. CJ, uh, not going to see a total washout, not going to rain the whole time, but it'll be nice to get that wet weather. The only thing is Sunday, of course, one of the busiest travel days of the year. That could impact your plans. Make it interesting. Oh, yeah. All right. We know it will. Appreciate it. Still to come on News Channel 3 at 11, a surprise at today's Thanksgiving celebration at the rescue mission. See who showed up. That's coming up next.
Mic check, one, two, mic check, one, two. Hundreds of people celebrated Thanksgiving a day early at the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission. Volunteers, including soprano star Michael Imperioli, served up a feast today. Entire families volunteered. And some of the folks working in the kitchen have known hard times before. We asked the chef to share some of his turkey secrets. Um, I just put in the bottom of the pan, I just put apple cider vinegar and a little bit of orange juice, and then I just cook it in that, and then I let it sit overnight in the juice. And then I just pull it apart, and it's ready to go the next day. How do you know a turkey's good? Like, is it when soft? it falls off the bone. Sounds good. Some of the folks who showed up today received free health services and gift cards before the noon meal. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. Sports is next. The Cal Poly men's basketball team spending the holiday in the Midwest. The Mustangs playing in the Northern Illinois Thanksgiving Classic. Good shooting game for Kyle Toth. He drilled four three-pointers on six attempts for his 12 points. Mustangs tie the game up at 51 on the driving layup by Josh Mishler. They moved to under five minutes left. Cal Poly 
Taking the lead for good, Victor Joseph, three of his game high, 19 points off the bench. Cal Poly wins 68-64. They made 11 of 22 three-pointers in the game. NBA and Golden State getting payback for an earlier season loss to the Lakers. L.A. without injured players, D'Angelo Russell and Julius Randle. Steph Curry on target from distance. And Kevin Durant back door. He had 28 points. Curry does this so many times, but it never gets old to watch. Great ball control and just enough to create his shot. He had 31 points. Here's one of his nine assists. The Warriors set a franchise record with 47 assists as they pound the Lakers, 149 to 106. It's their ninth straight win. The NBA's top team, the LA Clippers, getting their six-game road trip started right. In Dallas, Austin Rivers was feeling it from beyond the arc. Right after this three-pointer, he steals the ball, drains another triple. He was 6-7 from three-point land, finished with a team high 22 points. Blake Griffin. Going to poke the ball away. He's going to get rewarded for his defensive efforts. The Clippers win big, 124 to 104. They are off to a franchise best start at 14 and 2. To Cleveland, where Kevin Love scored the most first quarter points in NBA history. The former UCLA star scored a record 34 points in the opening quarter against Portland. He made all eight of his three pointers in that quarter. He outscored the Trailblazers by himself, 34 31. Golden State's Clay Thompson. Has the record for any quarter with 37. Love did cool off, finished with 40 points. Cavaliers beat Portland 137 to 125. Toa Tawa is having a spectacular junior season for Lompoc High School football. He is a force on both sides of the ball. Tawa has always been known for his physicality at both his linebacker position and at running back. Teams just don't have any answer for his power. This year he has scored 28 touchdowns. He's gained over 1,700 yards, averaging over 10 yards per carry. What has made him even better this year is how elusive Tawa has become. He can now make defenders miss in the open field with some terrific moves. Watching film from last year, I noticed I wasn't really too, you know, uh, side to side. I was really downhill running back, and I try to put that in, you know, that, uh, you know, isolate the defenders this year. On a dime, Tawa and a 12-0 Braves play Corona Del Mar on the road this Friday in a CIF Division IV semifinal game. We will have. Those highlights should be a really good game because Corona Del Mar scores a lot of points. Lompoc doesn't give up any. And then, of course, the Braves have Toa Tala. <laughs> Very, and he's, he can go to side to side now. Those are great highlights. Yeah, it shows it, how quick he is. And he still can run through people. Yeah, he as can. He saw. Boom. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, Mike. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
<laughs> okay, welcome back, everybody. We um, it's kind of a sad night for us here. It is a sad News night. Channel Three. Yeah, we're saying goodbye to Evan Robinson, who is our producer tonight, and she's leaving us. She's going to go to San Antonio, Texas. There she is, right there. Yeah. She's done a fantastic job for I don't how long has it been? About a See, year. It's been two years. Two you years. Know, she came to us fresh out wow. of school, Cal State Northridge, and we had many graduates from that program. Wonderful program there, and you know she's gained a lot of experience. She's going into a top 50 market. She's become a good friend of all of us. I'm going to miss her. We used to go out and get Chipotle for dinner oh. break, and I don't know who's going to replace you, but we're going to miss you. Big well, smile, big talent. Who's going to water the plants? <laughs> They're all going to die. <laughs> and she always fed us. She always had chips and salsa. She yeah. gave me napkins and coffee. She kept me awake. And she's giving me cues right now, and there's no emotion in her ear. I can't, Evan, are you about to cry? Yes, okay. she's crying. Okay. All right. I can That's hear the why. excitement upstairs with the control booth before we came back. She didn't even know we were doing this, but All right. yeah, she will be missed. And again, she's going to San Antonio. Evan, yep. we wish you well. You'll do a great job. Yeah. All right, quick last look at weather well, before Caesar's Evan cues nice. us and gets yeah. us out of here. Well, I'll switch to the seven-day. Why not? That okay. was after Evan's pick. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, 70 degrees and rain by the weekend. Enjoy it. All right. Be safe, everybody. Tomorrow, have a great Thanksgiving. Love and you, Evan. Yeah, we love you, Evan. We'll yeah, see bye, you. Bye, Evan. Love you.